Welcome back. And we have another conversation that's coming up. Now, all across the world, various countries have found ways to launch platforms and online systems where they can track uh, coronavirus cases. Just this morning, we're talking about what China is doing to ensure that uh, whilst getting access to your phone, they can track your movements in case you come into contact with another coronavirus case. Now, here in Ghana, we do have a software engineering company that has also launched a platform. And this platform is used to track symptoms of coronavirus patients and even more. And to tell us more about it is Dr. Kwabna Nyama. He's the co-founder um, of Cognate Systems Ghana, an AI researcher from the University of Edinburgh in the United Kingdom. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. And first of all, please give us details about the Opine Health Assistant, Assistance Platform. Hi, uh, good morning and thanks for having me. Um, so Opine Health Assistance is basically a data platform that allows uh, the public to engage with health experts and data scientists by giving uh, symptoms that they might be experiencing, which might be relevant to the coronavirus mm. uh, disease itself. Okay. So you're saying that it tracks the symptoms. How does it do this? And, you know, how does it get data from people to be able to track the symptoms? What happens is users simply dial a short code. So now this is not like the traditional mobile app that you would install on a mobile phone. Mm. Uh, what we've done is deploy this over USSD technology, which is very, very readily accessible to almost many mobile phones that are available. You don't need to have a smartphone. Mm. You don't need to have internet connection. You don't need to have data on your phone. All you do is dial the short code, which for now is star 920, star 222, hash. Hold on, hold on. Take it, take it easy for us. You said it's star okay. what? Star 920. Uh-huh. Star, star 920. Yes. Star 222, hash. Okay. Or if that doesn't work for some reason, you can also use star 714, star 444, hash. Okay. Well, it's actually on our screen as well. And so for those of you who are wondering, we'll project it for you um, to okay. see. So when you dial these numbers, what does it do? When you dial the number, it gives you a sequence of questions, questions that might be related to the symptoms that one would exhibit when they have you know, caught or infect, be infected by the virus. Or in cases where they are healthy, they can simply respond, I am healthy, and that notifies the system that this individual in this part of the country okay. is in good health. Okay, so you have access to the information on the system, right? And yes. what, you eventually inform the government about it? So what we've done at the moment is that all the data comes into our data platform where we're able to visualize it. So we can see on a map across the country different parts, you know, or communities where people are having specific kinds of symptoms. So you can say, okay, we are looking for individuals who okay. probably are showing symptoms like cough, tiredness, a fever, and then we'll see where in the country that is forming. And from oh, that, you can easily okay. see where hotspots are forming. You can use that to inform things like locking down. You can use that to inform contact tracing okay. because individuals are sharing that information voluntarily. I now, see. that information is available on our data platform, and we've informed... Uh, persons at the Ghana Health Service that we are ready to give that, you know, a way for them to be able to use to support or complement the work that they are also doing. But this so is basically being, to complement okay. their efforts. This is being done manually, if I got your explanation right. We have people on the field who are doing contact tracing, who are doing routine surveillance, collecting samples from people so they can send to the lab. So then what makes yours totally different? And if I can ask, more efficient. Okay. So what makes ours different is that we are letting the public tell us how they are actually feeling. Now, unlike contact tracing where you need to, you pick specific individuals and follow them mm -hmm. or follow the contacts around them. Yeah. In our case, you can ask people all across the country to simply tell us what kinds of symptoms they are exhibiting. They might be infected, they might not be infected. But having that aggregate information allows data experts to be able to say, okay, this part of the country, people are showing these symptoms over this number of days. And in cases where someone reports, say, on day one, that they're having no symptoms, and then maybe two days later, when they report on our system again, they tell us they are showing maybe the cough symptom with some tiredness. Mm -hmm. You can see some progression there, and that allows you to you know, take specific decisions for specific individuals. Another okay. thing we are doing is to allow um, some medical experts who can follow up on some of the cases that are submitted on the platform. Oh, when someone reports specific kinds of symptoms, they can call back and say, look, um, 
tell me more about the symptoms you're having. And that follow-up can then guide the decisions that are made about specific individuals. But at the moment, it gives us that global picture across the country okay. what kinds of symptoms people are having. And that would help in some of the decisions that we take. Okay, now for the fear of stigmatization, I do understand that there are lots of people who are hiding their symptoms, afraid to come out and tell people about it. There's an app, and you know how people sometimes get scared of the internet and technology, because who is collecting my data? Where is it going? How am I sure that nobody is getting access um, to this information? First of all, tell me how reliable um, this is in order, you know, in order to ensure privacy. And secondly, if I don't volunteer, how do you get the data? Is there another way by which you can collect the data as well? So privacy is actually at the core of what we are doing. Um, one of the reasons why we use USSD is not just so we don't, you know, continuously track people's locations on their mobile apps or their mobile phones. With USSD, you simply tell us where you are located. So you don't need, you don't even need to give us the exact point GPS coordinates okay. on the map where you. Are. You tell us, I mean, this area. Just give us close enough, a good enough description of where you are. We can use the various you know, technologies we have to try and reverse engineer and get the actual area on a map. Mm. Now, the only personal information that gets to our system is your mobile phone number. Okay. We don't ask for the name. We don't ask for your actual location. So it's, uh, it, the data is sort of at a level that nobody can actually identify someone personally. Okay. And what we also do with our system is to limit who gets to see even the phone number. So we can okay. anonymize that bit of it. So we, we are ensuring that people are, you know... Um, I kept but what if people don't volunteer? Because I have to dial the number before yeah. I'm able to answer the questions. What happens yes. if I don't? If you don't, if you don't dial in, your data is not collected. Nobody yeah, but how do you then collect? So that means that if no, if we don't volunteer, you will not be able to get the data that you want. Exactly. So if, if people don't volunteer, we are not getting the data. But what we've observed over the past few days is that we are having responses from all across the country, okay. uh, which shows that there is sufficient awareness and people are taking it seriously. Okay. So what we need to do is to encourage more people to continue to submit the data. It's not just helpful for, for the data scientists and the health experts, okay. but then also it helps understand the pattern in which the disease is spreading. Okay. And that informs how much we learn about it for all subsequent right outbreaks in the future. Thank you so much. Dr. Kwabna Nyama is the co-founder of Opine Health Assistant. Um, it's a platform where they track symptoms of coronavirus patients. I'm so grateful that you spoke to us.